Liverpool to Portsmouth, yeah, that chorus got the crowd screaming. All right, folks, the first thing you want to begin with whenever you're doing a speaker box, design it out. Lay it out, lay your cuts out, lay your measurements out, your airspace. It's harder to go into a box build without this information. So I have here one of my old designs I used to use for a Mats Pro 12. This is a good box for your high caliber subs, medium to high caliber, uh, anything with, let's say 750 plus, RMS so feel free to write these down I don't normally give out my box dimensions but uh, fuck it let's do it so this will be our first box that we build on the channel and as you can see we'll be building a lot of boxes that machine over there is what I'll do the majority of my box building on you'll see a lot fancier designs this is old school, gonna rip it on a board. So, and we're gonna use a bore, which is a nice way to get straight cuts with the circular saw. Then we'll transfer it over to the table saw and you use a router to cut your speaker hole out. In this case, I will be using my CNC machine. If that's something that interests you, we can build one of those on the channel later too. So, let's get the box building. This bore that much, so when I run up against this thing, it gets my cut where I need it. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our, the way I draw my cuts out, one, two, three, four, is I'll do cut one, I'll look over here, look down here, it says cut one is 26 inches laid out on the board. So I'm gonna come in 26 inches and we're gonna mark it. Mark multiple times across the board. That way you assure yourself a straight cut when you're laying down your I'm gonna call this my bore because that's the brand, but it's like a strap saw. Now in this case, what we would do, so we have to measure the distance between this guide and this blade, and we have to offset this bore that much. So when I run up against this thing, it gets my cut where I need it. pieces here front back top bottom I use a piece of scrap piece that's for my port so same type of wood this is built out of particle board three-quarter inch you can use MDF which is what I have below it uh, my bracing structures are done on a CNC machine so This type of wood is normally used for your entry level caliber subs to your medium, but if you can do good bracing, you can easily take it. Uh, I've used this stuff in the lane before in one, so just a heads up. It's not what you got, it's how you use it. Okay, for the sake of doing the video, I've taken some of the guards off of the CNC machine and the vacuum. It's already a little bit loud in here, but uh, let's show you what this beast does. If you're gonna really get serious into an audio shop, this would be something to have, but for the average user, you can build a desktop version for doing most of your cuts. So let's show you what this beast does. 100 inches per minute. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now running at 200%. Okay, we're at the router table. I'm setting my height. Okay, that looks good to me. Let's zip this up and show you what a router with a chamfer bit will do. For those that don't have a CNC machine, and I don't expect a lot of people to have that thing, like I said, if you're interested in that, we can do a project on how to build one. But this router is normally what you would use to cut your circles with. And if you, if you folks need a video on how to do that, let me know. Uh, my CNC spoils me, but I've worked hard to earn that CNC machine, so. Let's, but let's show you what the router does. And like I said, this would be your typical tool of choice. You can do a lot of beautiful woodwork with the router. I just do a lot of beautiful woodwork faster with the CNC machine. Okay, you'll see the beveled edges you get. Of course, I don't bevel all the way around because those are the edges that will touch the wall of the speaker box. So what we want is our air to flow. So when air goes to hit in a corner, it will automatically flow around. You SPL guys out there, if you're gonna do this, this is how you increase your SPL. If you're new to the game, if you're in the game, you already know that. But I, I don't like that chamfer. I want to go a little bit deeper, so let's set it up and go a little bit deeper. You can see we've got a much better chamfer on that, so our air is going to flow around this brace with no problem. Brad Neller. Grinder for when Brad Nell's pissed me off. Uh, glues, uh, lots of type of glues you can use. I use Type Bond 2. Uh, type Bond 1 is a little more watery, and Type Bond 3 is a little more thicker. Uh, this works for the majority of the woods I work with. Sometimes I work with a rare species type of wood, like your birch and stuff like that, and you might wanna switch it up to a Type Bond 1 or 3, depending on how much, how runny you need your stuff. Okay, so. The biggest misconception with speaker boxes is that the staples or the screws is what holds the box together. That's not true. The glue is what holds it. The staples is what holds it in place until the glue sets up. When this is set up and I go to tear this off, it should rip off. And the reason is is because the glue is stronger than the wood. It will actually rip chunks out of this wood. So tested, tried, true. Just trust me. it up. Make sure you're flush down here. Okay, we're going to recess the face where we're attaching it first. Push in on this, out on the inside. Should line you up. Glued it, stapled it together. This is the add to the length of the port is why I'm doing this little curve. Width, height, depth in a port actually is the science to it. You don't just cut a hole in a box and poof, you're ported. So there's some science that goes into this. Let's go ahead and spray paint this port. Back to where your eyes are gonna be able to see it visibly inside the box. Using Rust-Oleum farm equipment here. Okay, all I have to do is cover what's gonna be visible, so. 
we'll let that suck in whatever it's going to and dry. All right. Also knowing that my fort is going to come down this way and over. I'm going to come in a little bit of spray paint in my corner. Where they have enough and not enough. So there's that area. We also paint the top and the back before they go in. So this is what one of the braces look like or is going to look like once it's mounted. Okay, we're going to glue this one in. Glue up there. Non-toxic glue. Spread with your fingers. Slam your braces in. Push them up against that. Put our braces in. Real floppy right now. Once you get the top on, you start getting more and more. It just gets stronger and stronger. Okay, folks, we've got bracing in there. Okay, we have one brace in. Let's go ahead and set the port. I know this port's going to be two and a half inches wide, so I went on and cut me a spacer. I'll take that spacer, put it up in here. Get an idea where my port's going to be. you cut the curves so that all this air that would be bunched up in here it, it can find its way out through the roundness you kind of control the air you want it to come out here it's a good time to mark port so when you're going to run your router you know where it's going to go uh, i made the mistake of coming on the wrong side before grab your top trying to keep all this in frame Run your bead of glue across one side. Move it around. Stick it on there. Slide it around. Back and forth, back and forth. All right. Let's come in this way. Make sure your edges are good. Pull it towards you. We'll go back, look for any staples protruding. DDX12 in this tomorrow. Look forward to a review, brutal review coming up on Scar Audio. Kind of explain the business side to you guys. This is not always a fun business. Uh, there's a lot that happens on the back side and why retailers go under because they can't depend on the companies behind them and they choose the wrong companies. Let's get this port cut it up, folks. Okay, folks, you have a finished subwoofer box. All you have to do is carpet it. That's all cosmetic. I'll get you some pictures of this after we carpet it. If you want to see more of this, let us know in the comments. Like, subscribe, share with your friends. We appreciate it. We'd like to bring something a little more diverse to YouTube. I think to me, people are down one path, and we're going to be spread out a little more and do a little bit of everything in the auto industry. We are car audio shop owners, so 